that all leads into the next challenge, the quality of the data. Yes. So we've got these great use cases and we've, we've identified it, but if we go back to the AI fit message around what data do I have? Is it relevant? Is mm. it categorized? Is it classified? Do we have metadata? A lot of these businesses don't do that. And you talk about like the FSI use cases, mm. they've been doing that level of classification for a long time. So the rest of the businesses and the organizations I talk to need to do that catch up around their data quality. Yes. Um, what, what are you seeing um, from a South African point of view in terms of data quality? It is an issue, but it's 100% from what I've seen data leaders do in this country, leaps and bounds in terms of where we've been and where we're going. Um, for many organizations, especially the newer organizations, for example, newer banks, um, they are able to leapfrog mm -hmm. a lot of the, the, the problems we've had previously with data um, and go straight into the newer technology. So they've actually got a little bit of a benefit. And what you find is that those organizations can obviously compete at that global level in, in terms of innovation a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't discount, as you're saying, the work that has been done for large enterprises, specifically in, in South Africa and Africa, around getting the data quality right. You made a very interesting point around the more innovative startups coming to market. In your opinion, do you think that they are better at executing with the data that they've got? Mm. Or do you think that there's a bigger issue surrounding data? I do think that data curation is, is one of the biggest facets that play a role in that. Their ability to understand what they've got. Mm -hmm. uh, because as, they, as they're developing their systems, it's still fresh top of mind in terms of what it is that we're actually collecting from the customer. Now, when there's legacy systems involved, um, there's data sitting there, it's over there, also brings up the conversation of silos. Mm -hmm. Many organizers, especially the, the, the larger, older entities, have to struggle or have been struggling with data silos, right? Um, production needs to speak to demand, mm -hmm. right? So these things need to speak to each other and at, at, at the current level, they're not. So the reality of the sheer scale that we're talking about in terms of data and being able to successfully um, adopt AI when it's, um, it's one thing being able to do it in a, a specific department with a couple million customers, but can you do it when, when you're looking at the entire African region for your business? That's uh, it links back to the skills gap that you're talking about. So if you think you've got this mass amount of data, you physically, with really skilled labor, mm. you're going to get very little value in the long run. This is why the tools exist. The yes. AI tools help you get that intelligence and react quickly. And the more data you've got, the better those decisions are going to be, the less risk you have. So for me, the data is the start of the AI fit journey. 100%. Uh,